hoes, we run it up. All of these hoes, they won't come with us. Sipping that dirty, she getting real sloppy. Staying high, now she living the dreams. On the pants, Magello on me. Jolly Ranchers mix it up with the lean. Johnny Dang, all my diamonds on fleek. Pop me a perk, and she think I'm a geek. Hot in that land, why you looking at me? Counting this money, you ain't on my team. Setting a plot, we running through schemes. Hundreds on hundreds on hundreds, I want me a million. I ain't gonna stop till I'm rich. Getting this money like money, Mitch. Promise again that I never switch. Yeah. Oh, man, gift you with some, some RTS, uh, oh, man, that's cool. RTS product right here, you know what I'm saying? The sponsorship partner right here. Welcome to the video. Glad you guys clicked on the video today. It's Hot Shot Benny and Pops. We out here. Started a trucking company, but obviously we don't drive semis. We drive pickups. Pickup trucks. <laughs> All right, so obviously by the title of the video, I know you guys are probably tapping in, just waiting for us to get into the juice of it, and probably wondering like, what are you guys gonna talk about today? Should you or should you not get in the hot shot truck? And what you gonna put out some of the cons out there of what's going right now? What's going on right now in 2021 with the trucking industry, especially for hot shot guys? We're talking about rates. Um, he can talk a little bit more about it. This is his sector. You know, he's a dispatcher. I'm just a driver, but uh, he believes rates right now. So rates are for shit. There ain't no way, boy. What's going on is a bunch of new people coming into the business, taking freight for a dollar a mile or less. Ain't no fucking way, boy. Just ridiculous rates, low rates. Stop taking cheap freight. That's what's going on. And as soon as you take a cheap freight, the next week it's going to be cheap freight again, the same load. Whereas that load was paying two thousand dollars, this week it's paying a thousand dollars. So we got to get the, the numbers up. We got to get the the rate up. So somebody who doesn't know. What is cheap freight? Like, what is what is cheap freight? What is something that you do? Give us some yeah. examples. You guys need to get a dispatcher who understands what they're doing, who's been doing it for a while. You know, it's hard to say what's cheap freight because it just depends on a lot of things. It depends on where you are. It depends on where you're going. But you got to have some kind of um, some kind of bottom line, a number in your head that I'm not going to take anything less than this. I don't care what it is. Some people look at partials a little higher. But you're not always gonna get what you're looking for, but at least have a standard. You put something on the board for five hundred dollars going five hundred miles, I'm trying to get you up to a thousand dollars. I need two dollars a mile. Minimum two dollars a mile for a partial. And a partial could be something five hundred pounds. When you're carrying full truck loads now, you're looking for, of course, as much as you can get. You know, four or five dollars a mile if you can get it. But we gotta get the rates up. The rates are the rates are ridiculous. I've been on a low board for three days. Looking at the worst numbers I've seen in a while. Let's get the rates up. Equipment. Equipment is the best, the, the biggest part of the trucking game, right? Yes, like this, you need your equipment to run. You need your truck or your Gotta tractor. Truck. Gotta have a trailer. Trailers are hard to come by, apparently. Apparently, yeah. right now, big takes are. Yes, it's a three to six month wait. Same thing with Diamond C. It's about a three to six month wait before you can get yourself a trailer. We're actually looking for a trailer right now. We need to figure out what's the best trailer on the market. You know, is it Diamond C? Is it Big Tex? We need a trailer. And we got to figure out which one of those trailers we're going to go buy, purchase. Equipment is important and there's a shortage on equipment. You know, I guess because of COVID-19 and all the stuff, all the lay, you know, people got laid off or whatever the case may be, that there's a three month wait, four month wait just to get a brand new trailer. No one's selling trailers right now. And if they are sold, they're probably pre-sold. So in other words, you go put your money down and you gotta wait 90 days to get it. Some of these trucks, uh, well, you know what? I'm gonna call them in there. Ram, R-A-M, Ram. These trucks are still having problems, 2021. I got one of my hot shot, hot squad buddies called me just uh, two days ago. His truck got 10,000 miles on it, and he's broke down in Ohio. Dang. I mean, what kind of shit is that? Ram, get y'all shit together. If you got a CP4 still in the 2021 trucks, you need to change that out. Or do a recall and go back to the, to the CP3. But a man should not be broke down with 10,000 miles on his truck. That's the reason why we buy brand new trucks. You guys got us broke down on the road at 10,000 miles. And guess what you're not gonna do? You're not gonna replace that truck immediately. He's gonna probably be down for three or four months. He's gonna be out of business. Pandemic slew everything down. Like my truck, not 10,000, but let's go another 10,000 up, 20,000 miles. Y'all know my truck it broke down as well. And that truck sat down for like four or five months before we even got it back. And luckily we had this truck, my dad's truck, and another truck, which I could use so they continue making money. But imagine if you only got one truck, you come into the game, you only got one truck and your truck break down for four four months. You got truck note probably. Insurance. Insurance. If you got a trailer note. Bills. You got your own bills at the house. 
So it's a lot of stuff that yeah, go into man. it, man. That equipment is very important. So that's one thing I want y'all to think about if you're trying to get into the trucking, not trucking, the hot shot industry. Yeah, it's kind of hot for real, man. It's not that hot, man. Dude, Come I'm on, man. Boy, no, it's not that hot. We're going to get through this, man. Look what you got on right now, man. Dude, let's move. Exactly. We got DOT. All right, so this, this kind of goes back to your equipment as well. A lot of guys don't want to go that new truck route, so they go the old truck route. Well, you also got to be careful and conscious of that because DOT is targeting hot shots. It's the easiest thing to hit. It takes about 15 to maybe 20 minutes to inspect your truck. And the DOT officer has also said to Pops before, if y'all seen the video, they'd rather come get the hot shot because one, it's easier to inspect. Two, nine times out of 10, he's gonna find something with, wrong with the hot shot, something illegal. You see my videos, they pull me over all the time. May find drugs, may find alcohol, it's gonna find something wrong with the hot shot that's gonna be able to ding, it's gonna, they can ding you up for it and put that on the, on the books for you. You know what I mean? So DOT is a strong, component or yes. consideration why you should or shouldn't get in the hot shot exactly business. for 2021 2022 yep. because they are tart not and i'm not even exaggerating you can go check out some other people's videos check out my videos dot is targeting hot shots it's not a joke we literally had somebody say it on camera on one of my videos he is targeting us they're literally targeting us because we're easy to inspect and let's face that i mean i get it they got a quarter they may not tell you to have a quarter but they got a quarter but we got a mandate and our mandate might be X amount of trucks per hour. And with that being said, it sounds like, okay, well, if you just if you just abide by the laws and the regulations out there, you'll be fine. The officer is targeting you, your particular type of vehicle. Let's say, for instance, um, it was a big situation. I'm just giving you an example. The Dodge Charger. Police officers were actually char um, targeting that Dodge Charger when it first came out for a while, targeting it because nine times out of 10, it's somebody who looks like us driving it. Nine times out of 10, it's somebody doing something illegal in it. So they were targeting those vehicles so they can get mm -hmm. those, you know, get people locked up or whatever, mm -hmm. get them in trouble. So same thing with the hot shot. Nine times out of 10, he feels like he's gonna find something wrong with your truck. So when he comes out to you, inspect you with that mentality, yeah, he's, he's gonna try to find something. He's gonna try to find something. You so I mean? he's targeting you. He's got a negative mindset coming to you already. Like nine times out of ten, these guys are screwed up. Now I've seen DOT officers give people a great, a great write-up. In other words, when I say great, write, great inspection. Man, your trailer is new. Your wheels are great. New tires. Your truck is great. But they're gonna always find a butt on you. They can find a butt for everything. Let's face facts, man. You see the size of that safety regulation book? DOT officers don't even know what's all in that thing. You know what I mean? They, they don't come up again. They got to go pull it out and come up with something. Like, for instance, do you guys know if you're driving on paper log, let's say your EOD is broken, and you're driving on paper log for more than eight days? It malfunctions. Or if, if, if the EOD is not working, you cannot use it. You don't expect me to sit around and... Um, not earn any money for seven days right so i go on paper log that's why we have paper log it's a backup but if you ride on paper log for more than what is it eight days seven or eight consecutive seven, days seven to eight consecutive days do you know they put you out of service and the thing is is let's say for instance you ride on that paper log for 10 to 4 let's let's say four days you ride that paper log from four days right if you log off that paper log and then you come back onto that paper log, let's say you take a week off because your EOD is messed up, you're trying to get a new one in, it's taking the time to send a new one in, and you come back, let's say, five days later. If it's not in the same four to, uh, was it, seven to eight consecutive days, and your EOD, you did not hop on your back on your EOD, it's still considered a violation. You're not supposed to be on paper log within that 30-day period. So that means you have to go physically log back onto your EOD, and it has to work for you to hop back on that paper log again. Or, I guess what they're saying, Find a way to get around the system because you should not be on paper log more than eight days straight. Yep. All right, so you have to start over fresh after eight days, some way, somehow. I don't know how, I'm not telling you how, but if this, if that's your situation and you're on an EO, uh, a paper log for more than eight days, you cannot show them that you've been on paper log for more than eight days. Point is, man, yeah. you're a DOT target, man. You are targeted by DOT. They trying to. You have a target on your back if you're a hot shot. You have a target on your back. Point. Point. I'm, I'm gonna tell you some of the county, not the counties, um, states: Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kentucky, Kentucky Maryland. Uh, Maryland, Virginia, Virginia. Uh, West Virginia, Autumn. Them are major places. They're gonna try to hit you up, buddy. They're gonna try to hit you up. So, you gotta remember that you are a target by DOT. 
All right, so that kind of goes into the next part, all right? So if you're getting targeted by DOT, you out there, you're rolling, you're making a couple dollars, you're doing well. And let's say, for instance, you got the best equipment out there in the world. Let's say you out, you out there, you're running, but you're getting popped by DOT by some small things, some things that you don't even know. So we're going to talk about the insurance part. You're getting penalized three to four times. I'll give you a good example. Let's say they caught you for something. Let's say your hours of service for whatever reason. Sometimes it's not even your fault, but if you're not managing it, it's still your fault. We understand that, we're humans. Let's say they put you out of service. You gotta sit there for 10 hours. You're losing drive time to get to your location to drop your load off, so you're paying the price right there. A couple months down the road, let's say you renew your insurance. Your insurance gonna go up because you got a, out of service. You're paying the price for that same violation that they made you sit for 10 hours, that's twice. Let's say a broker, you're booking a load with a broker, the broker see that you was out of service. Some brokers, we say, well, we can't use you. Your CSA score went up because of that out of service. No, you can't get that load. That's the third time you're getting penalized. So you end up getting penalized three to four times for that one violation that you had because a DOT have no empathy. There was a video, I don't know if you've seen it on Asian Mind's show, Asian Mind posted where a DOT officer, did you see that? Mm -hmm. DOT officer pulled up inside of a truck stop. The dude had a blown tire. Mm. He was inside a truck stop. He was trying to go get his tire changed right. at, the, at the place. Right, 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 right. DOT officer parked in front of him and said, hey man, you got a blown tire. You know that you're, uh, you're in violation right now. And it popped him right there. It's on video. Wow. He popped him right there. So sometimes you got you got them good DOT officers, you got them bad DOT officers. So just remember yeah. that that can affect your insurance. That's what we're talking about. That can affect your insurance. Man, that's some jealousy right there. But I mean, you, the man is fixing the problem. He's already at the shop. Dude, he's not moving. He's not moving. Now, you gonna give him an inspection for a bad tire? Yep, and then he had a training. He was training somebody. He was, this is the bad part. He was training another DOT officer, probably just started, mm -hmm. and was training him on an inspection. He pulled it to, to inside the truck stop and gave him a violation. The dude is parked up. He's trying to get his tire changed. Maybe there's more to that story. Maybe they got him down the road. I was thinking there's more to the story, yeah. man. But when you hear it, it's just like they didn't yeah. even encounter each other. But still, I mean, empathy. I empathy. Right there, you should be able to look, man. You're doing the right thing. He you're didn't keep rolling. Yeah, he didn't keep rolling. You're getting it fixed. You're about to go spend $700 for a tire, especially a steer tire, right? So you're losing money right there. And you're going to give me an inspection and give me a negative inspection because of a tire that I'm, I'm fixing? Come on, man. Come on, it deals you. Come on, DOT. It's, that's, Come that's, on, that's, you, you guys need to be more human. It's the life of it, man. You know, you're not robots. You know, forget the, the blue, forget the badge, forget whatever color you guys wear. You, you gotta be human at some point and see when a person is not really out there. If they're not in a position or in a, in a predicament where they could kill or hurt anybody, man, you gotta be human. Yeah, they don't think in a moment like, dude, no, you messed you up this driver. Human. This could be this driver's, you know, I don't, I don't know. You could mess him up in a way where he loses his CDL for he like loses thirty jobs, days. He, he loses, loses his, his CDL, jobs or whatnot. Like, you know, he, he can't get, feed his family. Exactly. You know what I mean? For a, a, a violation that's really is not that. I don't bad. even know how you write that up. How did you write that up? You, you, they just write it up. They're the police. That's it's crazy, man. But yeah, you got to think about that. That can affect your insurance, man. So that that kind of goes right back to the DOT targeting. Um, it could happen to anybody, but just remember with hot shots, you are being a target and it can affect your insurance in the long run. The last one that we felt like was kind of important, if you're trying to come out here, man, and you're trying to get a fleet, start a fleet, let's say you invest, you get three trucks, three trailers, you're able to get that. Driver's going to be one thing. He started off with a driver and I think after a few months, oh, he was driving. Month. It was one month? 30 days. Oh, go ahead, talk about it. Yeah, after 30 days, he had to go. He didn't want to do what he's been, you know, what he didn't want to follow my directive, basically. He thought he knew more than me. But look at me now. <laughs> so he had to go. I mean, I'm footing the bill. I'm paying the bills. I'm paying you when you not dropping off enough money. Regardless, you were getting paid. And I was paying him like 30%, which was a mistake, by the way. I ain't paying nobody no 30%. You gotta be fair because you're not paying the bills. You're not fixing the tires. You're not fixing the mechanical issues. They don't take care of your right? stuff, and period. You, truth be told, if you, when you buy yourself driving people's stuff, you don't take care of it. You really don't. Most drivers don't take care of equipment. I think we had my man in, in the truck for four months. He put a dent in the side on one side real bad, a dent in the other side. That shit cost me about four or five thousand dollars. Well, it should really cost me four, but somebody's trying to hit me more than that. But yeah, that cost me four thousand dollars to fix. For a driver that really wasn't dropping off any money anyway. He was always trying to be home. They always want to be home. You got to think like, yeah, at the end of the day, you human. We're not going to, you know, talk too much about him, but the driver always wanted to be home, um, doing things. You know, some you don't know what they're doing out there. Uh, maybe I know what they're doing. Maybe they got people out there in your truck. You know, they got people out there in your truck. 
And I tell you, I remember you you said something about the PSI was all messed up on all the tires. It wasn't taking care of the truck at all, man. It was it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, drivers simply most drivers. I'm not going to say all drivers. A lot of drivers just don't have any care for the equipment. The equipment is yours. When I give you a truck, it's your truck. Treat it like it's yours because this is what's earning money for me and you. We are a team. Mm -hmm. We are a unit. But again, that's my fault for hiring the wrong people. All right. So going forward, I'm gonna try my very best to hire the right people. But drivers is a problem. If you're an if you're an investor and you're looking just to buy a truck and put somebody in it, it's hard to keep drivers. Drivers, a lot of most drivers don't really want to work. Yeah, it's easy to get anybody in a truck, man. But yeah. to get somebody who's gonna be reliable and give you loyalty and mm -hmm. treat you just as much you're gonna just as well you're gonna treat them, yeah. it's really hard to come by. Cause luckily for my pops, I'm his son. Now, granted, I know I got a couple violations. I did. Uh, I showed y'all the proof on the videos, but um, I'm we still in this together. We in this together. So I'm I'm not I'm not abandoning him, and I'm doing my best to make sure I keep up my truck. I know a company with some beautiful Peterbilts, right? Beautiful Peterbilts. Paying eighty four, eighty five thousand dollars a year, yep. and they can't keep a driver in the truck. Mm -hmm. Beautiful man, eighty five thousand dollars a year just to drive, and you don't have no responsibility for the equipment. The dude said he had, he was having his drivers home every day or every other day, I believe, if I'm correct. And they were getting paid eighty four thousand dollars a year. Yep, can't keep a driver. And they had benefits, I believe, as well. Yeah. And he was a small company. He wasn't like yeah. no big he like burner. He had like ten trucks. But you getting paid eighty four thousand dollars a year, you home every or every other night. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good deal to me. Driving a beautiful Peterbilt. Beautiful truck. You got a nice truck. It's not like you got no busted old truck. You got a nice truck. The truck looks like it's a twenty seventeen or higher or something like that. It looks really good. But drivers, man, drivers are another part of why we feel like you should, you know, take into consideration if you're going to start hot shot trucking in twenty twenty one, going into twenty twenty two. Those are just some of our points that we want to touch bases on. If anybody who's running a fleet or maybe you got your own hot shot out there right now, you want to drop a comment in the comment section and tell us how you feel. What are some things that you want yeah. people to, you know, look at or be in, um, have, have concerns about? The laws. We got laws coming out next year that we're not quite sure what they're going to be. We're hearing they're going to go up to $2 million liability. And right now it's a million dollars worth of liability. If it goes up, that means you're going to be paying more insurance. So it's not like we're making a million, millions and millions of dollars out here. We're not. You're not going to come out here and get rich. You're not going to come out here and get rich overnight. It's not going to happen. It's a steady grind to be better. But it gives you a freedom that, honestly, I've never had in 20, 30 years. I've been working for other people. And that's what I love about it. You know, Benny dropped a video about me turning down 100,000 bucks. You know, it sounds good, but, dude, the freedom, man. I mean, I'm going to Wisconsin uh, today to Monday and I can't wait to get up to Wisconsin then after that I'm going to Miami you know I really don't want to go to Miami because there's another cheap freight city like you go to Miami Florida man you come you might have to bobtail your butt back to Georgia because the rates down there for shit when you come into hot shot don't think you're gonna come here and be no millionaire tomorrow it ain't gonna happen but Let's say right now you're working at nine to five, you hate clocking in. Every time you clock in, or every time you even drive to that job, you hate you, you hate the thought of going to that job. You waiting to get off work, you can't wait to get off work. But now if you're doing your own thing, you're doing hot shot, you're doing trucking, you can't wait to go to work. You're gonna make just a little bit more money, but you gotta remember the company's making all the money. You need to pay yourself, and be fair, pay yourself a little bit more than what you was paying or what you was getting paid from that old job. But pay yourself a little bit more. But you, you, it's not here to get rich. We're here to have fun, really. Is it? It's a freedom, like you just said. Yeah, it's freedom. Freedom. I hop in my truck, man. I'm driving all day. I'm listening to whatever music I want. I ain't got no supervisor telling me I can't have my phone out. I mean, of course, I got it on the mount. I, I don't have no nobody telling me I can't answer a phone call. I don't have nobody telling me I can't play rap music. I can't play country music. Whatever I want to listen to, I can stop and take a break whenever I want to take a break. I can go to California, I can go to Miami, I can go to Minnesota, go, go to the casinos. It don't matter, I'm always on vacation. So this job or this position or whatever, or hot shot or whatever, is for you not to get rich, but for you to have a better living than what you had before. Counting these commas, we run it up. All of these hoes, they won't come with us. Sipping that dirty, she getting real sloppy. Staying high, now she living the dreams. On the pants, Magello on me. Jolly Ranchers, mix it up with the lean. Johnny Dang, all my diamonds on fleek. Pop me a perk, she think I'm a geek.